Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Isn't it lovely to have the church so full of people? I'm so happy. Oh, and um, if you are celebrating Chinese New Year, Gong Hei Fa Choi to you. Um, hello. Um, so this is the week where we're thinking about Christian unity. So, uh, yeah, thinking about our brothers and sisters in China and everywhere, really, yeah. So, if you're ready, let's join together. Oh, I should, give, I should just say who I am, by the way. My name is Sophie. I'm a member of the worship team here at St. Mark's. Um, our vicar, Cathy, is here at the front. She's there, yeah. And George is going to come and speak um, later. She's waving there as well. So, yeah, it's a good team today. Um, so, yeah, whether you are a regular or whether you're worshipping with us for the first time, you are very, very welcome. Let us pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Let's join together in worship. Please stand.
Yes, Lord, we want to be overcome by your presence this morning. We want to know you as king, know that we don't need to live in shame. You have released us to welcome you and to serve you. And we're going to praise you more and sing how you are a God of wonders, that you have the whole of creation, that you created us all and where we are. Use this uh, moment uh, in worship to, to bring your prayers to God this morning. Lord, reveal your heart to us. Reveal your heart to me. Reveal your heart to this church this morning. 
Lord, we look to you. And Lord, we just wait with expectant hearts because we know you're going to speak. Amen. Hello, good morning. Lovely to see your smiling faces as usual. Um, my name is Ruben, as I'm sure most of you know by now. I'm the youth, children, and schools worker here at St. Mark's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, wife. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's time for our children to go out to their groups, which is really exciting. We've got lots of uh, fun things planned for them this morning. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Sermon on the Mount. It's going to be loads and loads of fun. Um, so if you are 3 to 11, you're very welcome to come and join me upstairs. If you're a bit smaller than that, we have an unsupervised crash in the chapel. And we have a... Hello. We have a, a speaker that sort of works, so you should be able to hear the service in there. Um, but let's pray for our children as they go out to their groups. Are you going to pray, Theodora? No. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for all these uh, children you've entrusted to our care. Thank you that you know them and you love them. And Lord, we just pray that this morning they would get a chance to know you and love you more. Amen. So children, if you follow me out that side door and um, yeah, we'll get you signed in. Sad to leave us, yeah? <laughs> okay, so let's take a moment to um, confess our sins before the Lord. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of our heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in the prayer that's being said across all of the Anglican churches today. God of all mercy, your son proclaimed good news to the poor, release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. Amount us with your Holy Spirit and set all your people free to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to have our Bible readings read by Will and Lizzie, and then Georgia will come up and do the talk. So our first reading is from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 1, sorry, verses 10 to 18. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so that there may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. And still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptised into the name of Paul? I am thankful that I did not baptise any of you 
accepts Crispus and Gaius. So no one can say that you were baptised into my name. Yes, I also baptised the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptised anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptise, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Our Gospel reading is Matthew 4, verses 12 to 23. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfil what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and illness among the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. Morning. It's lovely to be with you this morning. Let's just pray um, before I talk. Father God, would you open our hearts to hear what you have to say to us. Father, I pray that you will use what is of you and will forget what is of me. Father God, would you draw us closer to you. Amen. So, we're going to talk about Christian unity this morning. It seems quite topical if you've been reading the papers. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that. I'm not going to say a lot about it. Um, but yeah, it does seem pretty topical. And I've entitled this Impossible Dream or Realistic Expectation. And I'll leave you to decide by the end of this talk whether you think it's an impossible dream or a realistic expectation. Um, I remember hearing a talk once about um, Jesus' prayer, particularly his prayer in John 17. Um, and Jesus, of course, prayed many times when he was on earth, but one of his prayers was that they may be one. And as far as I know, that's the only prayer that's yet to be answered of Jesus's. So we want to see Christian unity, but how are we going to get there? So I'm going to start off this morning, because I don't know you very well, so this is me trying to get to know you a little bit. So I'm going to give you some questions, and all you have to do is raise your hands. They're not too difficult. So can you raise your hand, please, if you support Southampton football team, the Saints? Oh, quite a lot. Can you raise your hand if you support a different football team? You don't have to name them. Okay, a few of you, a few of you. Can you raise your hand if you're a supporter of the Labour Party? Yeah, 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 a few. Can you raise your hand if you support a different political party? We're not going to be very specific here. Okay, great. 
Can you raise your hand if you consider yourself as belonging to St. Mark's Church? Okay. And can you raise your hand if you belong to a different church? Okay, wonderful. So as expected, there's lots of different allegiances and belongings and senses of belongings here. And yet in the passage that Will read to us from 1 Corinthians, Paul encourages, in fact, he appeals to the Corinthians to be of one mind. So what exactly does that being of one mind look like? It's something that Paul repeats again and again throughout his letters to the churches he writes to in the New Testament. Now, clearly, we know that, I think we know, that having different football um, allegiances, different political affiliations, doesn't have to be divisive, though sadly sometimes it can be in our society. So I wonder what Paul really meant by that. What does it mean to be of one mind? Well, we're going to start by looking at the context of the passage. So Corinth uh, was a city in Greece. The church in Corinth was a fairly young church and had been founded by Paul. The city itself was pretty cosmopolitan. It was made up of a pretty diverse population, not dissimilar to Southampton. Within the church, you've got people who've converted from the Jewish faith, people who've converted from pagan religions, so worshipping lots of different gods, some of whom would have um, had particular philosophies that they followed. You'd have had some very wealthy people in the church in Corinth, as well as people who were slaves. You had some very well-educated people and some who are barely literate, could barely read at all. They're a very mixed bunch. I suspect we are too. Paul had spent 18 months with that church, teaching them, laying the foundations of their faith. But now, several years on, he gets a message, a report from Chloe's family, uh, that all is not well in this church. Factions are appearing, divisions of loyalty, and they're threatening to destabilise the church and weaken its witness to the unbelievers. I wonder if you've been in churches like that in the past. I certainly have. It's a really sad day when communities of faith become divided by their loyalty to certain leaders or certain teachings. And I don't think you can be part of the Anglican communion without being aware this week of certain divisions and disagreements. We've had the announcement this week about same-sex marriage and the differing views going on in the Anglican Church. They are deeply held beliefs. I don't know where you're at on that, but they're a really difficult situation. I am praying that somehow we can still be united in the midst of disagreement, that somehow we can move forward even if we hold different views on this, because it must break God's heart to see a people for whom his son died tearing each other apart. That's not what he wanted, is it? Let's see what Paul has to say to this church in Corinth and perhaps what God is saying to you and I as well today. Paul appeals to the church in the strongest terms, in the name of Jesus. He appeals to them that you may all be in agreement that there be no divisions among you, you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. He says to the Philippians, be of the same mind, have the same love, be in full accord and of one mind. To the Ephesians, he says, make every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit. As I've already said, it was central to Jesus' prayer for his followers that they may be one. It's central to God's heart for us that we be united as believers, not just for our benefit, but for the benefit of those who don't yet know God. Our unity speaks volumes to the communities around us. 
Sadly, often it's our disunity that speaks loudest to those who do not yet believe. How are the Corinthians divided? Well, the sad thing is they're beginning to look to people rather than to God. They've become polarised in their support of particular individuals. One group saying, we support Paul. He's our founder, after all. He was here for 18 months looking after us. Another group is saying, no, we support Apollos. Now, Apollos had come to the church after Paul had left. He was a Jewish convert, and by all accounts, he spoke very powerfully and was very eloquent. There's another group saying, yeah, we back him. He's a great teacher. And there are others back in Kephas. Kephas, of course, was Peter, the disciple's Greek name. And he'd visited the church again sometime after Paul had left. Perhaps they would say something like, well, he was a close personal friend of Jesus. Surely we should support him. Are we sometimes guilty of this too? Do we ever not come to church because we don't particularly enjoy the person who's preaching? We don't enjoy their style. Maybe we miss an opportunity to worship with others because we have a preference for a particular style of worship or a particular speaker? Are we guilty of putting our human preference before our unity as believers? Of course, we've already discovered we've got different preferences. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, whether that be sport-related, political, ideological, theological, or philosophical. That isn't the issue here. We don't have to have a church full of saint supporters. We don't have to have a church full of Labour supporters. Heaven help us. Being of the same mind doesn't mean being clones of each other. So what does it mean from a biblical perspective? Well, again, Paul comes up again and again with an illustration of what it looks like to be united. And he sort of expands on that in this letter to the Corinthians. He uses the illustration, of course, of the body, and he does that again and again. Different members, different parts of the body, fulfilling different roles, but all united and taking our cue from the head, Jesus Christ. When Jesus is our focus, when our hearts are set on pleasing him and supporting one another in our roles, there's going to be unity, there's going to be harmony. And that sounds really simple, doesn't it? And it is simple, but it's really hard to live out. So I thought of two things that I think are really practical ways that we can build unity together. And I think there are two key elements One of them is humility, and one of them is love. So I'm going to look at humility very briefly. It's not a very fashionable quality in our society, is it? And yet I think it's integral to us as Christians and to our Christian unity. Humility is not about being a doormat. It's something very different. It's a conscious choice we make. And I think um, Paul in Philippians 2 defines it perfectly. He says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And he goes on to explain that that was the attitude of Christ in coming to earth, in Christ incarnate. He didn't try to make himself everything. He took on the nature of a servant. And if we're going to build unity in our relationships, in our church, humility has got to be one of our hallmarks. And it's countercultural. Society keeps telling us, you as an individual really matter. You're worth it, says the ads. Your needs always should be met. Your opinion needs to be heard. And we have that all over social media, don't we? But what does the Bible say? Christ says the first shall be last. Christ says the humble or meek will inherit the earth. Paul says, I make myself a slave to everyone. 
I don't know all of you well, but I do see that attitude of humility in so many of you I've begun to get to know. And we need to build on that, both in our individual relationships and as a church, to respect one another's deeply held beliefs and values, even if sometimes we don't exactly share them. Paul gives a really practical example in this letter to the Corinthians about how we can disagree but be united. There are some people in the church who are avoiding eating meat because it may or may not be sacrificed in a pagan sacrifice, so in some of the temples. And because of that, they've basically gone vegetarian. Others... They, they think, well, it doesn't matter what we eat because those gods aren't real anyway. God's, our God is the only God. So actually, my conscience isn't bothered by eating meat. If I don't particularly know where that meat comes from, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to carry on eating meat. So you've got two differing views in the church. And what is Paul's advice on that? He says, for those who have an issue with eating meat, if he's with them... He doesn't eat meat. He makes sure he respects their deeply held views. For him, maintaining the unity of the body is more important than him arguing theologically with them. And I think that's a really important lesson for us to learn. There are fundamentals of our faith, and we often say them in the creed together. And they're really non-negotiable. But there are other bits surrounding our faith where you might hold slightly different views to others. Let's not cling on self-righteously to those. Let's be accommodating and seek the good of others. I think that's the principle here. Let's go on to the second quality, love. Colossians 3.14 says, Over all virtues put on love that binds all together in perfect unity. Our love is going to speak louder than any words of testimony to people around us. They're going to speak volumes within the church as well. Love in action as well as words. And Paul, of course, goes on in this letter to spell out what that agape love looks like. It puts others before yourself. It's patient, it's kind, it's long-suffering. I'm not sure either of those qualities of humility and love we can do in our own strength. We need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to enable us to love as Jesus loved, to be humble as Jesus was humble. So I just want to finish by praying for unity in the church and the wider church unity in this body and unity in our relationships as well oh father god we just pray for the anglican church at the moment we ask father for wisdom for justin welby who's in such a difficult situation trying to keep the church together yet knowing there are some deeply held views father we pray lord we pray for your wisdom in this situation we pray, Lord, for a desire for um, unity and love here. And we pray in this church, Lord, would you bind us together with your love. Help us to be people that are humble and full of your love for one another. That that may be a witness in our communities, in our workplaces, in our neighbourhoods. Amen. Thank you, Georgia. What a really powerful challenge to love as Jesus loved and to be humble as Jesus was humble. Yeah, we can only do that in his strength. Um, now we're going to join together in singing King of Kings and acknowledging that he is Lord of all we do. Let us only do these things in love and humility with the uh, strength of Christ. Um, and this is reminding us God is living in us. Um, so let's uh, bring our to God with this song. King of kings, majesty.
Lord, in royal robes that you have clothed us in that we do not deserve, yet we can stand before you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And please stay standing for a second. We join in this affirmation to say that we have all seen the light of God. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned now let us affirm our faith in the lord jesus christ the son of god though he was divine he did not cling to equality with god but made himself nothing Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, (coughs) proclaim, that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And Bev um, is going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. We are going to pray for the world, for the United Kingdom, and for our community. Almighty God, we thank you for this world. We thank you that this is your world. With people of different races, different social classes, in different parts of the world, but all created in your image. We see your beauty in humanity, so we say thank you, Lord. We thank you, sovereign Lord, for the beautiful creation, the mountains, the seas, the oceans, the stars, the moon, the sun. We are reminded of your love for us and your provision through your beautiful creation. Help us to look after your creation all around the world. Lord God Almighty, 
we especially pray for political leaders around the world. Father God, you know all of them by name. Help each and every one of them to lead their country with wisdom, with integrity, with a servanthood heart. Stamp out corruption, stamp out injustice, stamp out mismanagement of public funds in all governments across the world. We pray for unity among political leaders. Father God, may they be taught by you on how to love and how to lead. You are the greatest leader of all times and you are love. We pray for peace in all nations and an end to wars, an end to violence and an end to poverty. Father, this is your world. We are your people and we long for a new heaven and new earth. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In your mercy. Now we pray for the United Kingdom. Sovereign Lord, we thank you for United Kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for the public servants who work tirelessly to serve us. We lift all nurses, doctors, therapists, lab staff, cleaners, maintenance staff, paramedics, everyone who works in the health sector, be it NHS or private. We pray for them to be rewarded financially accordingly. We pray for a quick resolution to the negotiations for pay and working conditions. We pray for there to be enough resources for them to do their jobs the best of their ability. We pray for more staff to come to the care system, for discharges to go smoothly, for the elderly to be looked after well in the community with love and dignity. Almighty God, we pray for better incentives, for there to be enough people that train to be doctors, nurses, paramedics, therapists, and all the other jobs where there is need in the health sector. Intervene, almighty God, and do what only you can, sovereign Lord. We thank you for the school teachers and teaching assistants and all the staff that work in schools looking after our children. Lord, we thank you for all the hard work that they put in. We thank you for their dedication, their faithfulness and resilience to their profession and to serving our children. Lord, we pray too for a quick resolution to the negotiations for pay and working conditions in the education system. May they have the right training, the right support, the right resources for them to do their jobs well. We pray especially for teachers and teaching assistants that are here at St. Mark's Church. We thank you for them, Lord. Watch over them and protect them as they take your light to schools. In your mercy. Amen. And finally, we pray for our community. Almighty God, we thank you for the city of Southampton. We thank you for all leaders, be it in the council, church leaders, in the government, local businesses, charities, and all leaders that contribute to making Southampton a safe, stable city. Father God, may you grant more wisdom to all leaders in Southampton. We pray for the vulnerable in Southampton, the elderly, widows, orphans, people suffering from mental health illness, the lonely, people living with disability, victims of domestic violence. Lord, may you embrace them in your strong but gentle arms. May they experience your love, your protection, and your provision. Help us here at St. Mark's 
to look out for the vulnerable here in Southampton. Father, we thank you for all the Christians and all the churches here in Southampton. As Georgia has already prayed, we pray again, Lord, for unity among Christians and churches. May we continue to be united by the love of Jesus. Help us to work together for the glory of the Lord. Help us to support each other as Christians and churches as we serve your people here in Southampton and beyond. Help us, Father God, to be moved by compassion, to have patience and to be merciful towards one another. Almighty God, build your church here in Southampton. May more and more people come to know you as the gospel is proclaimed faithfully in all churches. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join those prayers together in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. And it's a prayer for unity. Draw your church together, O oh God, into one great company of disciples, together following our Lord Jesus Christ into every walk of life, together serving him in his mission to the world, and together witnessing to his love on every continent and island. Amen. So firstly, can I say thank you so much to Georgia and to Sophie for leading us so well this morning. Um, I have a few bits of church family news to let you know about. Um, firstly, uh, on the 30th of January in the evening, it is Georgia's licensing service. Yay! So um, I'm sure all of you know, but just in case you don't, um, Georgia has um, recently joined our clergy team here at St Mark's. So that wonderful sermon that you heard a few minutes ago, um, you will hear more from Georgia. So uh, it's really, really wonderful and exciting to welcome Georgia to our clergy team. Georgia is also um, the chaplain at St Mark's School, which is wonderful and creates some wonderful links there so that's great so it's on the 30th of january and um we're going to do refreshments before the service so we're going to have like a um like a suppery tea thing buffet tea um from 6 p.m um so um yeah please come along to that put that in your diary and uh if you're on our church email list you will have had a link to respond and say yes you can come or no you can't um to that um, and if you're not on our um, church email list, but kind of see yourself as part of St. Mark's, then please, please get yourself on there because that's how we let everybody know um, about what's going on. Can somebody just wave one, grab one from the table and wave it, please? Helen, maybe could you? Thank you. So that people know what to look for. 
It's a little piece of paper that says welcome on the front and then you can put your information on the back of it um, and give it to either me or to Ruben or Sophie um, so that we can make sure that you get to hear about everything that's going on. But we would really, really love to have some delicious homemade cakes um, to offer. So, um, Helen, will you give us a wave at the back there? Helen is um, coordinating, I think, together with the social team. Yeah, yeah, but I've, I, I mean, I could get everybody to stand up. That's <laughs> Yes, it'd be lovely if we could have some delicious homemade cakes for that. Thank you very much. Um, so that's on the 30th of January at 6pm. And the service itself will be 7.30. Um, Liz, will you come up and tell us about Hope Explored? Thank you. Um, morning, everybody. So we're going to be running um, a three-session course called Hope Explored, starting on the 8th of February. Um, it'll be in the small hall, 7 till 9. And the purpose of the course is to introduce people to this person of Jesus, who he is, what he did, and why we as Christians have hope in him. Um, the, the way the sessions will work is there is um, we're going to start with some refreshments, and I'm really glad you mentioned about baking cakes because I would love to be able to give, provide home-baked cakes. I'm not a baker. Um, so when you've got in the habit of baking cakes for the 30th, could you carry on for maybe a few <laughs> more weeks? That would be brilliant. If you're able to provide some cakes, that would be lovely. Um, if you're on the church mailing list, there is um, some information on the email that came out on Friday with a link to sign up. If you think you know someone who would you really love to bring along to introduce them to Jesus, they'd be very, very welcome. Um, myself, Paul and Bev are, are doing the course between us, so please speak to any of us. Give us a wave. Oh, Paul, sorry, yeah. Paul and Bev was <laughs> the prayers. There we go, yeah. Um, and 7 till 9, um, there'll be um, a bit of refreshments, some videos, some discussions, a bit more video, time to chat. There is some resources which you take with you um, and fill in your own information. Um, you know, some things like that to take away with you. Um, so please speak to any of us if you're interested. And as I say, be praying now for anyone who you think you'd like to, to bring along. That would be fab. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. That's very exciting. So, yes, yeah, so if you're thinking about faith in Jesus or new to faith uh, in Jesus or just want a refresher, to be honest, um, then, you know, please um, have a chat with Bev um, and Liz and Paul and... Um, get yourself signed up for that. Um, so another opportunity to uh, find out more about Jesus um, is through our Connect groups, which are restarting um, this term. They're restarting in a mixed up way, so they won't be the same groups. So all the groups are new, so you would be with, um, not in, going into an established group, so that all the groups are new um, they're restarting in a couple of weeks um, and if you would like to join one of those groups then you would be so so welcome we'd love uh, everyone who sees themselves as part of St Mark's to be uh, in one of those groups so they meet fortnightly um, for six sessions so over 12 weeks um, and the main aim of them is to connect as the name says to connect with one another um, and as Georgia was encouraging us this morning um, about being in unity with one another. Um, it helps if we, if we know one another um, outside of Sunday mornings. It's quite hard, isn't it, to get to know one another just from um, quick chats over coffee on Sunday. So it's a real opportunity to get to know one another better. And Tracy, will you come up and just tell us, you've been part of a Connect group for the last two terms, haven't you? You and Will have been leading one, in fact. So can you tell us about your experience of how connect group was for you and your group like it was great fun uh, we, we really did have a good time um, we had lots of different people in our group um, and we had other people join as we were there um, we did a lot of time finding out about each other we were supposed to do a bible study but we kind of never got round to that <laughs> um, it, it, it just didn't happen really we did an awful lot of praying because we we really like found ourselves being a group that liked to eat and and to pray and to chat so we just had a great time supporting each other. We found out about each other. I would ask people to bring some weird and wacky things along, like, you know, what's your favourite book? 
um, or what's your favourite film? And we just found out what people liked and what they didn't like and found out that some people liked some really weird things. Um, and, but it was great. It was really lovely. And we just enjoyed eating. And in fact, it was like, who can bring the differentest thing each week? And we had to bring, what was it, chocolate buttons. Huge chocolate buttons came every week for one particular person who really liked them. And, um, and we even found, that with me being dairy-free, lots of different things that I could have as well that people would make and bring along. So we had such a fab time. We really did. And the support that we felt for each other was really important because there were some really big things being prayed about. And it was great to know that we could just put it on the WhatsApp or phone someone or email someone and know that everyone was praying. So it was really good, brilliant. Thank you very much, <laughs> Tracy. Um, so uh, put your hands up if you were part of a Connect group over these last two terms. Lots and lots of you were, which is fantastic. Um, so would anybody else like to tell us about your experience of being part of a Connect group? What did you like and appreciate about it? I know there were some very good reports that came out of the groups. Come on, be brave. <laughs> Who would like to tell us what it was like being part of a connect group? <laughs> um, no, I, we met in a, in a Jenny and Andrew's house, which is lovely. Um, and um, yeah, we had a really nice time. We would share and uh, have a bit less food, I think, it sounds like, than uh, the other group. But it was, again, really, really nice to kind of share together, to pray together. Uh, we did, um, sort of depending on the week, whether, as I say, yeah, whether we did a Bible study or chatted and prayed or whether we looked at uh, something else short. Um, and, yeah, it was just really, really nice to build that community, get to know each other, and also in that smaller setting kind of bring our kind of, yeah, prayers and, and uh, things before God. Um, yeah, it was really... Lovely. Thank you. Who else is going to be brave? Well, speaking as somebody who is relatively new to the church when they started, it was lovely to um, really deepen my friendship with those I met uh, with. It was lovely. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, I think that's really important, isn't it? Because if you're if you're fairly new to St Mark's, um, then um, actually this is really, really the best way to get to know others. Um, you know, because like I said earlier, it's quite hard to get to know people just from a few minutes chat on a Sunday morning. Um, so if you are new, if you're new to St Mark's and so you want to see yourself as part of our church family, please would you join either a connect group or Hope Explored? Um, depending on where you feel you, you're, you're at. I would really encourage you to do that, to just take that step beyond um, a Sunday morning and get a bit more involved with one another because that's how unity can be built. That's how we can be a community to one another um, and that's how we can fulfill the mission um, that Jesus has called us to fulfill and show love to the world around us. So I really encourage you um, to do that. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Oops, sorry. Um, then Helen is coordinating them. Um, Helen, give us another wave. That's Helen at the back there, um, if you don't know. Um, so yes, um, Helen's coordinating them. Um, or you can email Jane, or you can email me, or speak to me, um, if you'd like to be part of a connect group. Thank you very much for that. Now, Becca, you're going to come and tell us about Family Lunch Club. Uh, hello, I'm Rebecca. Um, in February half term, uh, we're going to do two more sessions of our family lunch club. We started up in October half term, um, and we provided uh, jack potatoes, food, uh, games, and things like that. Um, we um, opened up to St Mark's School, possibly can go into a banister as well, um, which I was thinking I haven't put that past Kathy yet, um, <laughs> to uh, basically offer it uh, to families who might well... Kind of, uh, the main aim is to offer it to families uh, of all ages who might well struggle to then feed their children over um, over the holiday when they're not getting free school meals or things like that. Um, however, it is open to anyone who would like to come, who would like to kind of have a safe space to be, um, and you know, warmth as yeah, well. the warmth as well, um, to kind of have that space to come uh, for a few hours. So, if you um, would like to either come with your family, um, relatives, elderly relatives, young relatives brilliant uh, please let uh, Jane or me or Kathy know uh, but also uh, if you are willing and able to volunteer again um, it's 
on Wednesday the 15th and Thursday the 16th of February, which is in the middle of half term, uh, and we'll be meeting from about sort of 10.30, 11 o'clock in the morning, um, and then people come in from 11.30, go by two, and then it's the tie up afterwards, um, so it's a couple of hours in the middle of the day. Um, if you're willing and able to help with either of those days or both, please let me know, because it'd be amazing, and it was, yeah, really, really encouraging last time, and we're hoping to just grow it and grow it, so yeah, please do pray as well. Thank you, Becca. Thank you. Now, um, I just want to give you a, um, a very, very brief update as to where we are regarding our potential move uh, from this building to the URC church building down there on Shirley Road, uh, right next door to St. Mark's School. I'm sure that almost all of you know about that. Um, um, as something that our church is considering and praying about. Um, we would really value your ongoing prayers. Um, at the moment, we, um, before we start spending major money on surveys um, that are required for both buildings, for both the URC and us, because um, we're going to swap buildings, effectively, um, but before we start spending major money on surveys, we are just waiting back to hear from the city council as to whether or not they will allow, or at least um, the initial sort of reaction, verbal reaction from them um, around whether or not this building can have um, a change of use because it would become offices. That part of the building would become offices and this part of the building would still be open for uh, community use. So we're waiting for word from the city council um, and then we will start um, obtaining surveys um, on the condition of the building and various renovations that would need to be undertaken. Um, and we've been already um, acquiring quotations uh, for various things that we know need um, to be done, renovated, in order to be able to um, get ourselves up and running in the new building. Um, so please keep praying about that. Uh, it still is not, um, it's not a, a certainty. Um, we, we, we are still praying that God will open the way and, and, and the provision will come um, for the funds for the renovation, but it is a major renovation project. Um, and so please keep your prayers uh, on it. And uh, when I was in there um, this week, I went in there this week with uh, Kate Seagrave, who we had preaching last week, um, and she was very encouraging, wasn't she? Um, and she and I went in, because she's the sort of uh, church planting missioner uh, for the diocese, and so she has given me some support this week. Um, and she, um, she felt that um, we needed to, there was, some, there was a whole load of Bibles and hymn books and things that had just been left there, and I've been there for three years, basically. Um, so she gave me, gave me, she's encouraged me to take um, these two, um, these two books, says one's a New Testament and Psalms and one's a whole Bible. She encouraged me to take these, almost like a seed, um, from that building, um, from the, the praying and worshipping life of the church there in the past. So if there's anybody here, is there anybody here who doesn't have a Bible but would like one? this very special one that comes from the URC building. Put your hand up quickly if you haven't got a Bible and you would like one. Can't see any hands going up. Or a New Testament and Psalms. No. Okay. Well, uh, oh, Rani, yes, which one would you like? This one. Okay. Come and get it. <laughs> um... And I would love to encourage somebody to take this. Please, will you pray over it? Will you, will you pray about, as you use it, was, I don't know if you're going to give it away to somebody else, maybe you're going to do that. Um, will you pray as you use it? Pray for that building down there. Pray for the potential move. And would somebody like to take this one and do the same? To pray. Use it and pray over it. Thank you. Thank you. Just a reminder, a seed sown from the uh, praying and worshipping life of that community down there. Shall we? Actually, Paul, will you come and pray for it now? Thank you. Yes, let's pray. 
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you are in control of all things. Lord, we thank you that your word promises that you are here with us now. We thank you, Lord, that you call us to pray. Father, we take this time to lift up the situation with the URC building, Father. We pray, Lord, that your will will be done. We pray, Father, that uh, we are in the midst of your will. Help us, Lord, to move according to your will. And we pray, Father, for a favourable decision from the council for uh, the use of this building. We pray, Lord, that uh, you will equip Kathy and all those involved with uh, making decisions with a clear sense of your will and your purpose for this church. Father, we thank you for your favour upon us, Lord, and we pray that we will continue to walk in your light. So, Lord, we just lift the situation before you, Father. We pray for your blessings upon it. We pray for the URC as well, Lord, and we pray that you will bless them in their journey, in their walk of faith. And we lift all these things to you now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Um, can I just encourage you to look around the room at the moment? Look around and see uh, how many empty spaces there are. Look and see where they are. Imagine if you were a new person coming into this building and you see this. You might have to wriggle your way down to find a seat through you know, various people. People don't like doing that. It's, a, it's kind of a known fact that once churches reach um, sort of 75 to 80 percent full, they stop growing. So we are, if you look around the room, you can see that we are probably 75% full here. So it's just a, a reminder. Um, that building down there is much bigger. There's a lot more space. So it's just a, another reminder of actually why this is important for our, for our community here. Okay. Th I think that's all I need to say. We're going to have another song, are we? Our final song. Should we stand as we sing our final song? Be Thou My Vision, I think. Is that right? <laughs> as we uh, bring to God all these things we've thought about this morning, ultimately our vision has to be on God to bring all those things together. So let's sing uh, and remind ourselves about how God is our vision and that is what makes all other things possible.
Should we just remain standing for the dismissal and the blessing? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.